question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering it's surgical and authentication, kindly yes, tell me, yes, what is this region in picture A that you're looking at? It is the madam, proximal thigh femoral triangle. Yes, good. Can you please identify structure, this structure 19? It's sartorius. All right, can you tell me please the attachment and the nerve? Innervation so, and uh, action, please. Uh, anterior superior iliac spine origin insertion yes. is the yes. uh, pass anterior muscle to proximal tibia medial side. Nerve supply is uh, femoral nerve, and action is, uh, is it is a tailor muscle. Uh, a tailor sit in this way, flexion of the hip, abduction. Yes. yes. And uh, it is also assist in uh, 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 um, flexion of the knee is also assist and it also assist uh, the flexion of the hip too. So Taylor it muscle. is the, okay. Uh, what is the characteristic of this muscle? One it is the, uh, it is the longest muscle of the body, strap like. And? And uh, it, uh, mm, it, uh, it, it involves the uh, pelvis to the uh, knee joint. Okay, good. Can you please tell me the boundary of the femoral triangle? Yes, uh, laterally is sartorius, uh, medial border uh, laterally, and medially, medial border adductor longus, and superiorly inguinal ligament. Yes, and okay, and uh, medially and laterally, okay, uh, that is the floor, if you can tell me. Floor is uh, uh, floor, uh, medial to lateral adductor lo uh, brevis longus, and uh, Pectineous muscle. And laterally iliosos. Can you please tell me the contents of the femoral triangle, please? Uh, uh, from medial to lateral, uh, femoral vein, femoral artery, uh, great saphenous vein attached to femoral vein, and, and uh, femoral nerve, and the femoral canal most medially with the lymph node. Okay. Can you tell me, okay, femoral, how the femoral canal is formed? It is the extension of the fascia, peritoneum, uh, transversalis fascia uh, to the uh, groin and thigh. All right, it is formed of the femoral sheath. Can you tell me how femoral sheath is formed? Uh, femoral sheath is the extension of the uh, extra peritoneal fascia, that is fascia transversalis. Uh, uh, in uh, to the femoral artery and vein. Yes. How big uh, is femoral? How, how, how big is this what? femoral sheet? It Three is, to four it is two cent. Three, Three to four centimeters. Yeah. And funnel shaped. And what else? This femoral uh, sheet is subdivided into how many compartments and how? Two comp uh, two compartment. A medial compartment, lateral compartment, medial compartment contain femoral vein and lateral compartment uh, contain femoral artery. Yes, and then there is, uh, and basically there are three compartments, uh, medial, the, the intermediate canal. and the lateral. Okay, yes. can you please tell me if you can look at the picture B on the right hand side, uh, if you can identify these structures, this is 12 and this is 14, would you be able to uh, identify them? Uh, 
Yes, madam, I can invite it. Uh, one is, uh, a, one is a common uh, superficial femoral artery and the, and the right one side is, is the... One is one, this, one. it's muscle. 14, it's 14. 14, 14. 14 is the um, uh, superficial femoral artery. Okay, and, and what is, and if the you left, can, yes, identify 12, please. And this is uh, a profunda femoral artery. What is eight, please? Eight femoral vein. Very good. What is this seven? Femoral nerve. And here, if you can identify five. Uh, five? Uh, yes, here, mm -hmm. five. Of perforating branches. Perforating. Right. Uh, this muscle is true. Which muscle could that be? This is the adductor uh, longus. Uh, okay. This can muscle you is the adductor longus. Tell me, please, how adductor canal is formed and if it has any other name. It is called subsartorial canal or hunter's canal. And yes. it is it is a, a musculofacial tunnel that is a groove, gutter shaped groove between vastus medialis and the adductor magnus. And okay. superiorly, there is sartorius muscle. A roof. Okay, and uh, can you please tell me the contents of this adductor canal? Uh, femoral artery, superficial femoral artery, femoral vein, uh, saphenous nerve, and uh, nerve to vastus medialis. Very good. Can you please tell me what is the surface marking of adductor hiatus? Uh, adductor uh, hiatus is uh, uh, lo at lower level of the thigh. Uh, Two third and one third junction uh, above the knee. Well, and you spear leg spine and the adductor tubercle. Yes. Adductor tubercle. A two third and one third junction. Yes, at the two third and one third. Okay, can you please tell me one physiological and one pathological function of femoral canal? A physiological and pathological. Physiological uh, that. Uh, a uh, vein can uh, expand when there is a blood flow towards heart, venous blood. So there is a space of vein to distend. And the pathological function is that uh, femoral hernia uh, can occur through the femoral canal. Very good. Okay, can you please tell me this femoral hernia is most common in which groups of people? It is older females. Very it good. is common in okay. older females. Can you please tell me this femoral canal has one femoral ring above it? Can you please tell me how is it formed? Uh, femoral ring, yes. Uh, femoral ring, uh, anteriorly inguinal ligament, laterally femoral vein, and uh, medially lacunar ligament, and posteriorly pac pectineal uh, muscle okay. or pectineus. Can you please tell me what are you looking at here in this picture on the left hand side, which says medial and lateral? If you can identify these structures A to D, please. Yes. It is the arteriogram. Very good. Yes. And arteriogram showing A is a, a, a femoral artery, common femoral artery. Yes, then and B, please. B is superficial femoral, uh, profunda femoral artery. C and D quickly. Uh, yes, and C C is the uh, um, uh, B is the uh, superficial femoral and C is the uh, profunda femoris artery. Okay, we are moving on to the image on the right hand side. Can you please identify the structures from one to seven, please quickly? Yes, uh, one uh, catheter in the common femoral artery. Two is common femoral artery, and uh, uh, six uh, is the profunda femoris artery. Seven common femoral artery. No, and seven five superficial. Branch. superficial. Because common, superficial. you already said, is two. So seven yes. is superficial femoral artery. Then yes. three and four, please, uh, and five. Three me uh, medial circumflex, I mean, lateral three circumflex lateral, yes. femoral, and four medial circumflex femoral artery. Yes, and five is profunda. Yes, five. Five is what? perforating branches. Five is perforating and six is profunda femoris. One is catheter. 
which yes. is being introduced through the abdominal distal abdominal aorta. Mm. Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, madam. Le left side is uh, difficult, but left side can be checked. Le which, left side uh, of the yes, who a will tell? A this is TB perineal trunk. Which one? A or B? The left side one. Yes. 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 This. Yes. And then what is B, please? Anterior tibial artery. C and D, please. D C is posterior, uh, posterior tibial and D is peroneal artery. Good. Yes. Now is it yes. clear? Yes, it is clear. Good. Good. Starting your timer, and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood considering this surgical pathology patient, kindly tell me once you come across this patient who has histology reports saying carcinoid tumor invading two right lymph nodes, what your answer would be to the patient? Okay. My counseling for to the patients would be that the involvement of the pleura and the lymph nodes and shows that the tumor has metastasized and maybe it, it, it has the worst prognosis compared to these two structures not being involved by the cancer. Okay. Can you please tell me how would you define carcinoid tumor? A carcinoid tumor is a neuroendocrine uh, tumor in which uh, substances are produced such as uh, serotonin, neurokinin, bradykinin are produced by the tumors. These carcinoid tumors are associated with which conditions? The carcinoid, yes. Associated with conditions, they, where they are located, ma? This one is located in the lungs, right? So if you think of this carcinoid tumor, what would you think that this condition could be associated with what? Okay, so we are treated with carcinoid uh, syndrome in which the hormones that are produced by these tumors become uh, active and produce symptoms and signs in the patient. Good. Okay, can you please tell me how would you classify lung carcinoma? Lung carcinoma can be classified into small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer. It can also be classified by the adenocarcinoma, which it could be the classic adenocarcinoma or it could be bronchoalveoli. Uh, adenocarcinoma. Okay, good. Can you please tell me uh, what are the risk factors uh, or what are, yeah, risk factors which can be avoided that can lead to the lung carcinoma? Okay, these factors for lung carcinoma are smoking and, yes. and abestosis. These uh, are family. the occupations, yes. What are family. the occupations which are involved in uh, or in leading to lung carcinoma? Uh, people that work in industries producing an uh, asbestos can yes. also be a uh, risk of uh, lung cancer. Then um, people that are also exposed to high content of uh, sm uh, smoke could also smoke be involved. And radiation? Risk. And radiation. All right, can you please tell me what is the gene which is involved in the in, co in causation of lung carcinoma? I'll come back to the customer. Yes, BAP1 gene. Okay, so yes. can you please tell me if you are asked to differentiate between lung carcinoma and mesothelioma, how would you do it? 
Okay. Lung cancer usually affects the lung parenchyma, while the mesothelioma is a tumor that involves the that arises from the mesothelium uh, from the mesothelium of the lung. And then a mesothelioma is a diffuse uh, tumor, while a lung cancer is usually a localized cancer that is involving a particular part of the lung. Yes, and third reason, lung carcinoma is yes. The third reason is uh, uh, mesothelioma could be arise as a result of a patient exposure to asbestosis. Why uh, for lung cancer to occur is not compulsory that patient has been exposed can to asbestosis. occur isolatedly as well. Okay, can you please tell me how would you, okay, depending upon the cause of the lung carcinoma, how the management of the patient could differ? The 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 depending on the if it is a, a small cell cancer patient will require yes. um, a pneumonectomy or a lobectomy if, uh, if the is a particular lobe of the tumor that is involved then patient can also benefit from use of a, a, a chemotherapy like a immunotherapy like a, a tyrosine kinase and inhibitor in managing the patient. Okay, can you please tell me which carcinoma of the lung is common uh, in non-smokers? Okay, is uh, the the is adenocarcinoma? Yes. What kind of carcinoma is adenocarcinoma? Is a non-small cell? Yeah, yeah uh, but it's glandular from glandular epithelium and is a is arising from the uh, mucus secreting uh, cells of the lung. Yes, a, that's and it mostly occurs in the periphery of the lung. Yes. Okay, which carcinoma of the lung is more aggressive? A small cell and lung cancer. Okay, uh, more aggressive and poorly differentiated. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Uh, how can you confirm your diagnosis? What are the investigations that you can do? Okay, the investigations to confirm diagnosis, I want to do a sputum cytology, a bronchoavular and lavage, and then for cytology. Also, a biopsy can also be done to know the histologic um, properties or parameters, characteristics of the tumor. Okay, what is the role of chemotherapy in case of uh, lung carcinoma? Uh, lung Carcinoma is not um, is it that sense. Uh, chemo dependent or no. not? Yes. This chemotherapy is uh, or can be positive in which type of tumor? That chemotherapy can be used. You can have help from your friends. They can write in chat and tell you. Okay. okay, can you please tell me, uh, I'll come to an easy question. The significance of pleural plagues, because here also this uh, tumor was invading pleura. So if you can tell me the significance of pleural yeah. plagues, what does it tell you? Yes, pleural plagues are seen in patients or individuals that have been exposed to asbestos. Abestos yes. and it's a significance of yes, yes. Yeah, and? a lot of time patient and lung cancer or mesothelioma as a result of the pleural plaques. Are these pleural plaques malignant? No, they are not malignant, but they are a risk factor for patients yes. developing malignancy. Yes, cancer. Okay, and then they are. You said they can be, okay. Okay, all right. What are the, yeah, what what would be the advice that you'll give to the patient? The as plura plex. For this patient? How for, would you tell? The, okay, yes, what the, would be the management options? For the for this patient, the patient has it. Yeah. Um, tumor and uh, pneumonectomy done. So I'll cancel so, the patient to avoid uh, smoking. Then yes. I'll 
I will tell him that it's too much metastasis that we also need to, to have uh, some of the uh, nip nodes removed. And then if he has symptoms of uh, uh, carcinoid uh, syndrome or, or uh, paraneoplastic syndrome, yes. treatment will be offered based on symptoms. Yes, this you will not tell at, at once. You will say, okay, first you will give the advice for life, uh, lifestyle modification. And then you will tell the patient that you will be discussing this particular case, this patient's case in your MDT. And then you'll get back yes. to the patient. Because if you tell that that's uh, whatever you, it's it, even if it's correct, you can't answer like that. You have to say that uh, we'll, first you have to stop smoking. smoking. And then you have to uh, increase like walks and you have to take care of your diet and everything. Because, um, yeah, because if it's carcinoma, patient becomes anemic as well. And then, meanwhile, you'll discuss the case with MDT and then you'll get back to the patient. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, starting your timer, and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering the communication skills, station kindly begin. Okay, I'll enter the room, wash my hands. Hello, I'm Dr. Michel, one of the surgical doctors. May I confirm your name and age, please? Okay, good, good afternoon. I'm Smith, 50 year old man, 55 year old Hello, man. Hello, Mr. Meet, nice to meet you. Today I've been asked to talk to you about uh, an investigation which we would like to carry out for you. Uh, so can I please know uh, how much do you know so far about this investigation? Okay, my doctor told me to come today that they want to do one test for me because of my problem with eating, that they want to do a test for me to take something maybe from my, from my throat and then look at it. That's why I'm here. Yes, Mr. Reed. Yes, Mr. Mead, that's right. Uh, I've, I'm checking from your notes that uh, you have difficulty in swallowing and your previous investigation has showed that there is some narrowing at the lower part of your food pipe. So uh, that is why we need to carry out this investigation. Uh, let me tell you in detail about this investigation or procedure. It is actually called an esophageal gastroduranoscopy, which can be abbreviated as an OGD. And in this uh, procedure, what we do is we just introduce um, two pen-sized um, uh, pipe inside your uh, food, uh, through your mouth, inside your food pipe, down into your stomach, and then into the first part of your bowel. And uh, this would be attached to a camera and the camera would be relaying some um, images onto the TV screen. So uh, the consultant would be able to see what's happening inside, what is causing this narrowing. And he would also be able to um, widen the narrow part of your food pipe. Also, he would be uh, able to take some tissues from the lining of the food pipe, which would help us in the diagnosis. So uh, are you following me till now, Mr. Meat? Huh? Is it painful? Uh, Mr. Mead, um, every uh, pr invasive procedure like this is uh, unfortunately painful, but uh, for this investigation or procedure, we would be giving you some numbing agent, or uh, if you want, we can also give you some sed sedation so that uh, you won't feel any pain during the procedure. You will, uh, it will make you feel drowsy and it, uh, it won't make you feel the pain. So um, oh, are, you, are you following me till now? Okay, is there any risk associated with this? Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Mead, every procedure is associated with some uh, with some risks, and so is this procedure as well. Uh, the risks that are associated with this procedure, they include um, 
things with pain and they can uh, also damage your teeth because of the introduction of the uh, uh, pipe into your food uh, into your food pipe and also because uh, because of the uh, this procedure there can be some chest infections occurring and uh, the most and there can be uh, some bleeding occurring from the areas from which we are going to take the tissue samples and uh, the most uh, serious complication that could occur uh, it is uh, it is cutting through your food pipe, but um, that occurs in about less than one percent of the cases. Oh, and uh, oh. listing all these. Oh oh, I, I don't think I want to perform the procedure again. I uh, Mr. Need, I completely I completely understand your concern and apprehension, but listing all these uh, complications does not necessarily mean that they will occur. And uh, also, I want to tell you that this procedure is only carried out by a skilled and exper experienced consultant. And uh, I would uh, I would request you to carry out this procedure because uh, it is very crucial in the diagnosis of your problem. Okay, thank you. But why am I salivating? Uh, Mr. Mead, this is because of the narrowing that you are having at the lower end of your food pipe, which is uh, hindering the uh, normal flow of uh, your saliva downward. Oh, oh, don't know. Is it a cancer? Can it be a cancer? Uh, Mr. Mead, I understand your apprehension, but actually it is too early to say that it is cancer. And uh, that is why we are doing this um, investigation. We are carrying out this investigation. So as we have the evidence, um, we will, I totally understand your uh, concern regarding this, but uh, we need to carry out this investigation. And we may find, um, if you may find something, we might need to carry out further investigations as well before answering you that, on, that question. Okay, when will, the, when will my results be out? Uh, Mr. Mead, it uh, usually takes about two weeks um, time for the results of the investigation to come, but uh, we will be informing you as soon as we get uh, our hands on the investigation so that you can come to the outpatient department and get it discussed. Ah, do I have to wait in the hospital for two weeks? Uh, Mr. Mead, it uh, usually comes within two weeks' time. Sometimes it's come early. Sometimes it takes a couple of days more, but I totally understand your apprehension regarding this. And um, I'm just going to contact you as soon as we get the results. Am I going to stay in hospital till the result is out? Uh, no, Mr. Mead, you will be going back home, but uh, you will be going back home after the procedure only when you will regain consciousness. And uh, for 24 hours, you will not be allowed to drive because you will be under the effects of sedation. So there, would be, uh, there has to be someone who can drive you back home. So uh, you, would, you can go back home, but you won't be able to drive. Okay, thank you. Uh, have you seen my results? Yes, have you seen my result of my test? Yes, Mr. Mead, I've seen your uh, I've seen your laboratory uh, investigation results uh, from your charts, and I can see that your liver enzymes they are uh, slightly abnormal. Okay, okay, all right, thank you. Yes, Mr. Mead. Uh, so I just want to ask you, Mr. Mead, around the time of ODT. Yes. Oh, so, Mr. Mead. Okay. okay. Yes, sorry, Mr. Mead. I don't have any question again. Okay, Mr. Mead, I just want to ask if you take any blood thinner. If I take any blood thinner. Blood thinner. No, 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 no. Okay, and do you take any anti anxiety medications or any other medications regularly? No, no, no. Okay, Mr. Mead, I just want to tell you that uh, you won't be uh, allowed to eat anything six hours before the procedure, and you won't be allowed to eat, uh, to drink anything uh, two, uh, two hours before the procedure. Okay, Mr. Mead, you'll also be given some leaflet that would be having all the information that would be required. And uh, I just want to tell you that uh, we are all here to help you in this, um, uh, uh, through this difficult time. And if you have any uh, questions, you can always ask me. I'm just going to summarize what we have gone through so that we, uh, I can get to know that you have understood me completely. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, Mr. Mead, so you are, um, uh, you're asked to have, uh, to undergo an investigation called esophageal gastroenteroscopy, which is abbreviated as an OGD. You have been thoroughly explained about the procedure and also the complications that are associated with it. Also, you have been told about the precautions that you need to take uh, regarding this procedure. The results of this procedure will be available anytime within two weeks, and we would be contacting you so that you can discuss the results of the procedure. Uh, is there anything, Mr. Mead, that you want to add? No, 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 nothing again for now. Thank okay, you, Mr. Mead. Thank you very much. Yes, then give the consent form to sign. Yes, Mr. Mead, I would be giving you this consent form. So uh, as you have agreed to undergo uh, the procedure, so you have to sign the consent form. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Just 30 seconds left. 
because once you have uh, confirmed or understood that patient has understood all the consultation that you have done with the patient, then you yes, have to make sure that patient signs the consent form. Yes, ma'am. And then you can say, okay, I leave my number with the nurses. Uh, if you just come across any question, then you can contact me. So that should be your last concluding sentence. Okay, ma'am. After making the patient sign the consent. Right, okay. good. Yeah, that's now. Now well done. Okay, very good. So how that was it? Can you give the feedback? Yes, please. Uh, yes, madam. Uh, she told that she will wash uh, her hand during uh, when she entered the uh, room. Uh, in communication skill, uh, will we wash our hand or there is no uh, need? It's post-COVID era. Uh, spirit will be available. So if she's saying it, but if in practical, she while introducing herself without uh, like without distracting the uh, environment, if she quickly sprays on her hands, and then she says, okay, I'm candidate of the exam and can I confirm your name and address, name and age? While asking this or doing this, if he does it, it's all right. Because it will be provided. It's still being used. Okay. Yes. So how did you find uh, their consultation? How did you? It is very nice consultation, yes. up to date. And Any uh, anywhere where right. you thought she has used medical terminology? Uh, I think uh, OGT will be used. Uh, no, no, that will be used. I think uh, <laughs> once for the first time, especially when she was explaining, she said uh, we'll be taking tissues. If he can uh, add the word samples, tissue samples, or just the sample, uh, that could be like a more elaborative rather yes okay. otherwise yeah Sentence. otherwise it was good uh and the tissue should not be mentioned on uh, not just alone and not alone uh, because tissue is our language you know it's not layman language so if you say uh tissue sample or just the sample to confirm yeah. your to confirm the diagnosis or your diagnosis so that would make a rather more sense so yeah Anyone else want to give feedback? Yeah, right, right on that. Yes. Is, um, the performance. Then she said then that I should not eat two hours. I can eat it two hours before the procedure. I think it's supposed to be four hours prior to the procedure, and not two hours. Uh, that is drink sounds before. Yeah. Mm, said two. But hours is, is good. Uh, no, uh, that is like if you are being uh, scheduled for afternoon and then you have like uh, for the light breakfast and nothing after 8 a.m. But like if it's in the morning, then nothing after midnight should be like this. Yeah. But uh, it, like one thing she did very nice, she confirmed if you're taking any medications and then in that scenario, patient will be taking uh, antihypertensive medications and then she rightly yes, advised that you have to take that with the sip of water sip and you can water. do that just yeah even two uh, two hours before the procedure that can be done uh, one question that maybe you people missed was um, would you be awake throughout the procedure and then she can explain how the procedure can be done by two by two or two ways yes ma'am yeah spray and then for this one we have the, yeah. for this one we have two options yeah. if if the stem doesn't mention any GA, then we can say that uh, you will be given a numbing agent, which would be sprayed at the back of yeah. your throat. Or if the patient is very anxious, so we can give him the option of sedation as well. Yes. And yes. if the patient is still very afraid and scared, then we can say that we can discuss with an anesthetist for uh, yeah. general anesthesia. Yes. Right. So that was, yeah. And then rightly, she gave you advice not to drive and then you can go home within 24 hours. But you're not supposed to be driving. So that's one advice that you can add is that you. it's better if you bring someone to accompany you back home. Obviously, patient cannot drive uh, himself yeah. back home. So another question uh, which came in exam and one of my candidates came back and told me uh, was that examiner asked the candidate 
if patient cannot drive back home, but can patient uh, travel in train to home? So what would be your answer? No, patient cannot travel no. uh, through train. Very good. Not even through train because there'll be uh, a lot of crowd and that can hinder yes. or that can a yeah, patient can all of a sudden become unconscious or something. So anything can yeah. happen. You won't be able to stop the train. No, and wouldn't be even able to ask for help or anything. Yeah. So rather than that, uh, okay, one more question. Would it be you who would ask? Uh, yeah, obviously in this one, you will arrange the taxi for the patient to travel back home. But if it was um, discharged against uh, medical advice, then would you or would you not arrange the taxi for the patient? Ma'am, if it's discharged again, medical advice, then I think we cannot because we no, cannot even prescribe. Cannot. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yes. This because for difference. Dharma patients, we cannot yes. uh, even prescribe uh, medications. No, because they are going against, they yeah. are leaving against your, against your advice. So there you have yes, to be careful that you cannot say that you will. Uh, yes. Ideally, they, you people allow two nurses to arrange it for them, but then it's all unofficial. Yes, ma'am. Officially, you should never say it. Very good. Good. Okay, starting your timer, and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering the clinical examination station, can you begin? Yes, I'm good. I'm Dr. Muhammad Anubusserji Kaldatta. They would like to examine your hands. Are you okay with that? It will include yes. talking and feeling and do some movement. Yes. Okay, thank you. May I confirm your name and age, please? I'm Tina, 55 years old. Nice to meet you. So, do you have any pain before we start? Yes. Can you point out the pain, please? Yes. Go ahead. You can tell me. Okay. Do you need any analgesic right now? No, that's all. Right. Okay. If you feel any discount, please let me know. I will stop. Okay. Now, can you expose your forearm to the elbow, please? Okay. Okay, fantastic. Uh, now, can you just please put your hand in this field? Yes. Perfect. Uh, now I'm going to have a look at inspection. So I'm going to see if there's any deformity, any surgical scars, any edema. And uh, can you just flip your hands, please? Yes. Looking for any nail change or any surgical scars, edema. And I need deformity as well, any muscle wasting. Now, can you please elevate your elbow like this? Okay. Looking for any rheumatoid nodules or a psoriatic plaque. Uh, now, can, just return them back. Now, I'm going to feel your hands. I will feel for a temperature at the palm and the wrist and just a little bit of the forearm. And uh, now I'm going to uh, feel for uh, muscle atrophy for the thinner and the high thinner muscle. And also I'm going to sweep my, uh, my thumb for looking for any palm or thickening on both hands. Now I'm going to feel your pulse, start with the radial, simultaneously, right and left, and then go for the ana, uh, artery. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, now I'm going to uh, just uh, fill show joints by manual uh, for the proximal and the distal interfering joint in each joint and the metacarbofaring joint as well and the carbo metacarbal joint. And also I'm going to pump it for uh, an automatic stuff box. Okay. Yes. In both hands. And uh, also I'm going to buy manually palpate the wrist for the carpal bond uh, in both hands as well. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to box. yes, and the anatomy the snuff box as well. Uh, yes. now I'm going to just uh, do the sensation. I need the cotton and uh, can you, you feel examine the elbow as well? Yes, uh, for the any rheumatoid nodules, uh, palpation from the elbow to the medial side of the forearm. Yes. Uh, now I'm going to do the sensation test uh, with the cotton. Uh, can you fix this? Uh, just close your eyes and tell me if you feel it. When you feel it, say yes, okay. I will put it at the radial three half finger for the median nerve and the ulnar and on the dorsum of the hands as well for any uh, for the first first space for the radial and the other for the ulnar nerve okay uh, now can you please put your hands like this pray sign for the wrist extension okay and feeling them for the wrist uh, flexion now put it them for a few seconds if you felt anything in the sensation or any pain just let me know Okay. Okay. Uh, now, uh, can you please do uh, make a fist for me? Yes. Now, can you return them back? Looking for yes. finger flexion and extension. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, can you please uh, just uh, do, uh, finger abduction? Can you just spread your fingers like this? Yes. And resist me. Don't let him close. Up. Uh, now, uh, can you just return them for abduction, finger abduction? Yes. Uh, now uh, I'm going to do the resistance. Uh, don't let me push it down for the this active uh, finger extension. Okay. Now, can you please uh, bring your thumb toward upward toward the seal? Him for. Uh, thumb abduction and don't let me please uh, push it down try to resist me okay now can you make this sign okay sign don't okay. let me separate the finger from the thumb and the index finger okay yes, yes. now can you uh, squeeze my two fingers please can you bring uh, just uh, grip my finger with your both hands, the thumb and the index. Okay. Yes. Uh, also, uh, I forgot to do the bimanual palpation for the metacarbo. Squeeze, squeeze test for the metacarbo joint. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, can you pick this coin for me, please? Okay. Pick for the sign script. And now I'm going to do the tenal test tab in your. Uh, yeah. Can you summarize anything? your examination now, please? Okay. Uh, now I have been examined. Uh, this uh, female, Mrs. Kaya, 45 years old, female, who presented to sun pain. There is no deformity, no surgical scars, no muscle lifting, no palmar thickening, and the temperature is by manually uh, normal in comparison to the body. All pulses were intact, the radial and the nerve was palpable. And the uh, there will be absence of sensation in the radial three and half finger uh, over the median nerve. Okay, which tests were positive? Funnel test and uh, tenal test. Okay, what are the uh, what are the investigations that you will do to confirm your diagnosis? Investigation, I will ask for uh, electromyogram and nerve conduction study, and also do some blood tests like blood glucose and thyroid function test and also may i need uh, mri for the neck to exclude any cervical text prolapse okay what are the differential diagnosis that you'll consider for her uh, 
ميت فيشل ديجوز كاربال تانل سندروم اوسو كتبيديو ديباتيك نيوروباثي اور كتبيو سيرف سيرفايكال ديسك رولابس very good what are the treatment of the underlying condition first conservative treatment meet in the hand over the night for three weeks and then we'll go for medical then steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or steroid injection if there is failure of treatment then I'll go for surgical Carbolton uh, uh, release. Okay, it's time would have allowed you. What more would you have been doing? Like in to the examine full and your vascular examination and also examine the joint up of the elbow joint. Very good. Uh, even this one, you couldn't complete the sensory examination of the limb, uh, uh, hand. Yeah, but. Uh, because of the demonstration, I just yeah. uh, talk a lot to demonstrate to you. Yeah, but then like you, if you mention, then it will be clear that you understood what part of the examination you have missed. So sensory, motor you were tell, telling me very good, but sensory uh, confirmation you have. Yeah, yeah. I will just uh, tell the patient directly and then I'm going to do this and this. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And then patient has to confirm. If yeah, can. without any medical test. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Right. Thank you. Move well, one question. This is carpal tunnel syndrome. How would you confirm, or what test would you carry out to confirm if patient is having a lernal palsy? And a nerve conduction. Also, uh, nerve conduction study. Sorry. Nerve conduction study. And there, you'll confirm, you'll examine introsiae, palmar and dorsal introsiae. How would you do that? You'll ask the patient to adduct ah, the fingers and abduct the fingers. Some abduction, yeah. Yes. And then, some uh, abduction is for the unknown nerve, the deep branch of the unknown nerve. And also the inter OCY for the finger abduction and abduction. Yes. And, and also the sensation. Yeah. Also sensation, yes. So these are the, and uh, how would you confirm if a nerve has been damaged at elbow and not on wrist? In the elbow, there will be an Yes, paradox. Yeah. And if it is on um, injury of an nerve in, at the wrist, then? Complete claw hands. Claw hand or, yeah. Very good, okay, thank you. So that's the difference.